Mean, isn't it? Hopefully it's going to be a magnificent fight. I can't see anything but. They don't really need to whip it up anymore, but there is a man in there brandishing the Puerto Rican flag. <laughs> <laughs> of course, now if Hopkins was there, he'd take the flag, yes. throw it on the floor, and it, jump as he on it. So, that he did with Felix so, so trust me, you, and listen, in the, the breakfast, <laughs> single act by any human by, being, by any human being ever, in front of what sixty thousand people in a stadium in San Juan, yes. in Puerto Rico. That was in the the build up to the to, to the Hopkins fight. Trinidad showdown. But what, what if uh, one of Judah's people does something like that tonight? That could happen. Wow. How much? Uh, indeed, and I, uh, that was what I was trying to suggest to you earlier on. And Judah's got plenty of form in that respect for doing the, the really ridiculous and unpredictable thing. And he's, as, as, as his brother Daniel, I think, was arrested once in Las Vegas for pushing over a steward as they left the ring. What has he got to you to do apart from win tonight for you, Steve? Cotto has got to not get caught. Because if he gets caught, he's going to show everybody who he fights in the future that you can catch him at welterweight. At the moment, we're saying the two bouts where he got one bout where he got dropped and the other bout where he got severely wobbled, they could have been stopped. They were at light welterweight, and we're saying he was weight weight. If this guy catches him tonight and either drops him or wobbles him, every other welterweight is going to say, "Don't worry about Cotto. Tuck up. You can catch him with a shot. You'll knock him out." The experience that Zab Judah has got in big fights, Duke, all over America, particularly. Does it not give him even an outside chance for you? No, he's gonna, he's, of course he's got an outside chance, Paul. But I just don't see how he beats A, Cotto, and B, the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> they, the, the crowd are going to play a massive part in this fight. You know, this is almost like a homecoming for, uh, for young Miguel Cotto. And um, I just think he's going to really rise to the challenge. What about Cotto getting carried away? What about Cotto maybe wearing his heart out on his sleeve? Yeah. Is that possible? Yeah, yeah, of course it's possible. I just can't see it. I mean, he's, we were speaking about the Chavez legacy for Mexico and so on, Steve. For Puerto Rico, Cotto, is he in the process, do you feel, of, of building Oh no, he, he's done it his because, stature as yeah, a, a national icon? Since Trinidad, there people. was the light middleweight David Santos who never quite put on. This is the guy, and as we mentioned at the top of the program, it's really important. He has mastered English, trust me. And that interview he gave there was a f fantastic interview. And HBO in America, who screen it in America, pay-per-view, where it really matters, they will be loving it. They love finally it. got a Spanish-speaking top-grade fighter who's taken the time to stick a few cassettes in and learn a Not bit of English. Not even Felix Trinidad really did it, no, did he? Trinidad and Chavez, they learned one word. Yeah. You are in trouble. <laughs> it, was, it was rubbish. They spoke like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger all the time. But he's still got some men there to aim high to, to overcome the likes of Benitez, Camacho. Sure, Edwin Rosario. Puerto Rico. Just le legendary, small country, just a conveyor belt. You know, in, in the sort of top 15 in world boxing over the last 50 years, they've got two or three fighters in there. If you were fighting Cotto tonight, Duke, or in the camp of a man who was, how would you try and go about the job? I probably wouldn't show up. <laughs> Say you were contracted and being paid to do it. Well, I'd give the contract to Steve. <laughs> if we forced you to go through with it tactically. Uh, I would try I would try and frustrate him as much as I could. How do you do in, that? Uh, just by getting on my bike. I'd just get on my bike for the first, I don't know, three or four rounds. Probably even, you know, I think you'd have to give away the first three or four rounds because, you know, he's just going to be so fired up and so strong and then just try and look to you know, get your way back into the fight in the middle rounds and hopefully frustrate him enough whereby, you know, round seven, round eight, where he's really desperate because he hasn't knocked you out, you know, just try and box his head off. If possible, it's easier said than done. I see it the other way around. I see that uh, Judah's got to be absolutely in and out really fast and please, put a bit of pressure on. Thank you both. Really enjoyed it. Of the two fighters let's hope we're going to enjoy event. it. Please what rise even at more. this time. Settle in with us then on Satanta Sports. two anthems. First of all, here to sing the anthem of Puerto Rico from Descarga Latina Orchestra, Joe Panta Jr. La tierra de Borinquen, donde he nacido yo, es un jardín florido de mágico primor, un cielo siempre nítido 
le sirve de dosel y dan arrullos plácidos las olas a sus pies cuando a sus playas llegó Colón. Exclamó lleno de admiración. Oh, the national anthem of the United States of America, a very special guest, SRC Universal Recording Artist, Melissa Jimenez. Say, gentlemen, this crowd is ready for this fight. I would say so. Boy, you know what? This place has really filled up over the past two fights. Well, the fight fans, as Mario was talking about, yeah, there's nothing better than New York fight fans. It's part of their tradition and their heritage here, and this is something they've been looking for. Here's a little shot of some of the action from Zab. And very interesting comments, guys. You're talking about his speed. He's it's got fast hands, but the thing that, you know, really could help him tonight is that straight left hand. I mean, that's the power, the, the punch that has some power in it. That's the one that he might be able to catch Cotto with. If he's going to do anything to stop the relentless pressure of Miguel Cotto, he's going to have to get his respect with that punch. And there, there he, they show where he caught with a right hook with Mayweather, which I believe was a knockdown, by the way. Absolutely. I, he I, totally, I, he hit him and he went down and he yep. did a glove touch. That was a knockdown. That's what the rules say. I see Senior across the way over here, Chavez Senior, with a big grin on his face. And here comes the walk-in, the challenger. He's 
father, Yoel Judah, in front. His trainer. From a family of seven fighting brothers. That's a rough household. <laughs> <laughs> and Zab Judah is one of those guys that you're gonna. It, it's tough to look good against him, regardless. That's he's true. a southpaw. He's fast. He's strong. Even if you win, it's it's tough to look really good against him. He was the undisputed welterweight world champion by winning the title in February 2004 against defending champion Corey Spinks. And it was an impressive performance that had everybody in the world talking about Zab Judah. And he had that bad stumble, of course, against Carlos Valdemir. Got the fight with Mayweather regardless, but I think the Valdemir fight just reinforced what everybody has always suspected about Judah, is that he lacks some kind of intensity. He can do very well to part through the fight, and then he does not sustain his attack, as we saw against Mayweather. For him to win tonight, he's going to have to show the ability to sustain an attack. Are we going to see the Zab Judah against Valdemir? Are we going to see the Zab Judah against Corey Spinks first time out? Well, the fighter he's fighting tonight is closer to Valdemir than he is to Corey Spinks, right? That's true, but, but I don't think he's going to have any problem getting motivated for this fight. He knows what, what's ahead of him here. Isn't it amazing yeah. how you can have problems getting motivated for a title fight? I don't care who it's the opponent. You're exactly right. Take a look at some of the styles of Kota. We've already mentioned he is a natural left-hander who fights right-handed and left hook is, is there's the punch that he just, well, the right hand put that one down. But he's knocked some people out with body punches. Uh, he can hit with both hands, but you know, most of the damage is gonna come from that left. And he's seen a lot of different styles. We saw him against Paul Malinaji there. Yeah, Paul Malinaji was last year here. And this was a tough kid from Colombia. Very patient fighter. He has worn the mantle of next great champion for Puerto Rico very admirably and very well and handled it. All the success and notoriety he gets on that island. He seems to always be on even keel, love his family, three children. He's a solid guy, there's no doubt about that. A solid guy. And you know, that, that little island's put out quite a number of great athletes there. Great fighters. Absolutely. The most popular being Wilfred Benitez and Felix Trinidad. Edwin Rosario. Edwin Rosario. Wilfredo Gomez. Wilfredo Gomez. Among the elites. Survived an auto crash in August of 2001 and almost ended his career. Says his shoulder bothers him still sometimes, but he was lucky he fell asleep driving toward training. Wow. See the folks from Mayaguez. I've been all over that island, Mario. What a great place. Let's go to Michael Buffer now. Set the stage. Holding up a little bit for Michael Buffer. Here we go. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, from the mecca of sports and entertainment and the home of world-class boxing, Madison Square Garden, New York City, USA, Bob Arum's top rank incorporated is proud to present the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Welterweight Championship of the World. Brought to you in association with Prize Fight Boxing Promotions. Sponsored by Puerto Rico Turismo and La Cerveza Masvina Corona Extra. Sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission, Chairman Ron Scott Stevens, and the World Boxing Association, Supervisor at Ringside, Sebastian Contursi. 
at ringside, the three judges scoring this bout on the 10-point system, John McKay, Tom Shrek, and Nelson Vasquez. And inside the ring, the referee in charge of the action at the bell, Arthur Mercanti. And now, for the thousands in attendance here at Madison Square Garden, and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, Damas y Caballeros, Boricuas, uh, let's get her ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red with black, official weight, 145 pounds. His professional record, 34 victories, including 25 knockouts with four defeats to no contest. From Brooklyn, New York, the two-time champion, former light welterweight world champion, and former undisputed welterweight champion of the world, Jab Super And fighting out of the red corner, wearing white, red, and blue. Official weight, 146, one half pound. He has a perfect professional record, consisting of 29 bouts. 29 victories, including 24 knockouts. From Paguas, Puerto Rico, the former light welterweight world champion, and the reigning, defending, Defeated, WBA welterweight champion of the world, Miguel Angel oh. Everybody out. Chief Sack. Nice to see Arthur McCanty Jr. in the ring, part of the great folklore and tradition of New York. Terrific referee and following the footsteps of, of his dad, who of course did the uh, great Ali Frazier fight here in 1971. Let's go, Miguel. Historic arena, historic uh, lineage with the officials, and the atmosphere is truly electric, guys. <laughs> Round one, scheduled for 12. For the Rugby Lake Championship of the world. Judo is a southpaw. Cotto comes out, throwing the right, throwing to the body. I would assume part of the strategy might be, guys, to try to work that body to take some of the speed away from Judo. Well, if you notice, Zab is starting with that right hand down kind of low to guard against the left hook to the body. He's going to jab from down around his waist. And he's capable of doing that. You have to have a lot of speed to do that. Working the jab out there. That and he's extremely relaxed in there. Yes, yes, always has been. And the thing about Cotto is he likes to start with the left hook to the body, so Zab knows, you know, if I start down here, maybe I take him a little bit out of his attack. Cotto looking a little thicker through the body coming into the ring. Has been very comfortable fighting at 147, as we mentioned. Just couldn't carry 140 anymore. That was the biggest challenge of Cotto's career tonight. You know, one thing we should point out right now, there will be no hair issues in this fight. And that's a beautiful level of cut by yep. Judah. And there's the speed right there that we were talking about. Counting him, but I think he's hurt Cotto, and he's got him in the corner. And he's the first score around that we were talking about where he could be so dangerous. This has always been the Achilles heel. Oh, this is the Achilles heel. Oh, and he's he's full start. to jump on this. Judah trying to capitalize. Well, a moment in the first round, a low ball. Oh, no. And here have we seen this before? And you know, it's so in this. 
is going to try to apologize. Miguel's going to try to apologize now, and I don't think Judas is much of a wow. move for it. And he slowed down his own momentum. Absolutely. He slowed down his own momentum that he had in the fight because that was his round so far. Yes, it was. I, I don't understand what Zach Judas is thinking. He hurt his own momentum. Well, let's, you know, I'm going to reserve judgment until I see the replay. But, uh, you know, I fear that you're right. Now, he, I guess he's going to take the whole five minutes, because if not, then you weren't really that hurt. You talk about slowing down just, up. There's, he's ready to go. I just point. don't understand. Neither do I. We'll have to take a look at it when we see the replay, guys. That definitely was a break for Cotto. I mean, he got caught with a beautiful uppercut. Any time to recover for Cotto. A great point. And it's, it just changed the whole momentum of the first round, guys. Cotto got caught. He'll learn from that. He seemed to be fine. He knows what kind of speed he's in against, of course. He's been training for this. And it's not like he hasn't been here before. He was hurt so badly by Witter and Corley and some other guys. I mean, you know, he's, he's right. been in this spot right. before. He's not hurt nearly as badly now. Keep him up, go. Still going to be Judah's round, I believe. J Judah reminds me a little in that instance of like an Andrew Galata. He's, he has a little success and he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know what to do and he ends up hurting himself. And doing things that... Self-sabotage, he got that right. Let him actually in that first round. I don't even know how to score that round now. <laughs> I gave it to Jude. I want to see the replay though, I really do. Give me water, give me water. Go okay. breathe, 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 breathe. Let's breathe. Give me water, give me water. You did good. first round. See the boxing, see the jab? And things going all wide shots. We beat you. Yeah. Stay in control, baby. I'm on that you got to go to the body. You got to work into the body. Keep your guard up. Always being busy. Try not to get caught with those shots. You got to work the body, Miguel. All right, here we go, guys. All right, let's get a look at it here. Let's see. Oh, oh what a shot. That, it was a left uppercut, but now let's see the low blow. Well, uh, a little oh. bit of a delayed reaction. It was well, not, that was is, not a low blow. But I, let me ask you this. All right, I, I agree. Delayed reaction. What is he trying for? First round DQ? Yeah, I, that's, I don't understand the strategy. He just, like, get he just likes drama. <laughs> Maybe. I think he just, he's a drama queen. You're not going to disqualify Miguel Cotto on now, one low blow. Now, Judah came out swinging a hard right jab. It was just above the cup line, uh, slightly low. Well, but it was... Uh, not as painful as he made it appear to be. With, with due respect to both of you guys, I'm going to leave that judgment to the man who took the punch. Okay. I just, I just look, I've seen him. Look, you know, we're not talking about a lot of tight low blows here. The, yeah. We hear Chang's going to be out at St. Patrick's Cathedral. I mean, I know, but that's such a sensitive area. I'm going to leave it to each individual to make his you, own choice. You know, that first round, I think, is is just a great. Just a, just a great example of Judah's career as a whole. He showed flashes of brilliance, but then there's always some drama to mess it up. You're absolutely right. We were wondering if all hell would break loose. <laughs> Two minutes in. Cotto was moving right. more forward in this round. Keep it clean now. Probably would be a little more cautious to avoid that left-hand uppercut. Big power shot he took just below the chin and on the neck in round one. Nice right hook by Judah. And then Zab took a shot between the Z and the A on his belt line. Mm -hmm. And Cardo's working that body now the way he wants to. And there was a good chop and left there by Cardo as well. He's got a powerful, powerful punch from just six to eight inches away if he can land it on you. Much like that punch that George Foreman did when he knocked out our friend over here, Michael Moore. And don't say it too loud. He's going I know, he's right over here. Way. You know, Cardo's being relentless. He's doing a good job of... Keeping the pressure on Judah, and that, that'll take it. So Judah did such a great job counter punching. I'd like to see him set his feet a little bit more and answer. That was a nice right to the body. He got two of them in there. Yeah. I think Cotto might have gotten his uh, customary wake up call though in round one. Under one minute left in round two, scheduled for 12. Cotto trying to dip to the body. Judah did a good job defensively this round of rounding some sharper punches, but the aggressor's been Cotto in this round. See, the thing about Cotto is he's like a lot of baseball pitchers. you got to get them early because he just gets better and stronger as the fight goes on. That's a great example. Yeah, he settles in, figures them out. Good body punch for Cotto as he digs it downstairs. 
Now that little flicky jab's not going to be effective for Judo against this guy. He's got to put, he's got to sit down on his punches a little more. Wow. Now he gets the ropes. There's a swarming. Judo's got to double up on that jab and answer oh, with that little bit like this. And he hurt him again. A little dance. He hurt him again. Yes, he did. He's got to, just as I said, he's got to let that left hand go. He's got to let that left hand go. A good flush punch. And still, when he's let it go, he's been able to connect with Cotto and hurt him. He's fast. He's so fast and he's so strong. He knows another beautiful. I mean, look at how, when he lets it go, how effective no. he can be. There's nothing more encouraging to a fighter than knowing he can hurt the other guy. And Zab knows that. Gosh, it's another tough round to score, gentlemen. You can hit with that jab, but it's like you're right here. Zab gave that one to Cotto. He jabbed you up. Por eso tienen que tirar siempre la izquierda primero. Para que él se cuide. That's why you always have to throw that left first. Keep throwing him. You have to throw the left first so he gets on the defensive so he can't counter with his left. Breathe deeply. You're doing great. Don't forget your game plan. Keep your hands up and attack the body. Don't bring your hands down, I'm telling him. When he come in, you see what I'm telling him, baby? Listen to me, look at me. When he come in, shoot some shots, tie him up. Touch the body, you got to keep the shots out of the body. Shoot the shots to the body, keep doing them. Keep moving into the body, boom, boom, in the body. Stay with the jab. All right, let's take a look. Now you see some vintage Kodo body work. It looks like a Kodo round all the way. Then we get into the final 30 seconds, and what happens? Well, let's watch. Ducking away in there. It wasn't even shot. that much of a punch. It wasn't, but he caught it clean and yes, he caught him beautiful, and it made him stumble backwards. You'd like to see him settle his, uh, set his feet and throw combinations, set him up with a couple, with two stiff right jabs, and follow it up with that left. Oh boy, if that doesn't encourage that Judah, you know nothing will. He's caught him with two shots that have had him stumbling backwards already. Good yeah, round and three. Shots, a straight, a straight left hand and an uppercut. Zab Judah's in the red trunks. Cotto's got the uh, Puerto Rican colors on his trunks, plus a whole lot of advertising. Low jack. <laughs> so we can find it in case we have to find it. <laughs> now, Roy out of the rock to Rakeda Jr. to Judah. Cotto's having trouble finding him. Maybe he should put low jack on uh, Judah. Well, well, Judah's one of those fighters. He gives you, aside from being fast, he gives you a lot of angles. He turns his shoulder well. The one Ooh. thing that hurts Judah in this fight is he's not very active. The, exactly you know? right. He's his own enemy. <laughs> yeah, he picks his own shot. Oh, oh here we go again. Wow, that, I mean, that is dramatic. That is dramatic. And I think you're right when you mentioned he's going for the DQ. I hope not. Why do that when you can win the fight out? I don't understand, Wally. He's hurt him twice in the fight. Keep your eye on the corner because, you know, we've seen this before. Uh, you know what? That was a that was a solid shot to the cut. Uh, he, you know, if he's acting now, Mario, i got to tell you, he's pretty good. You better watch his career. I, I, this guy's pretty good. I'll tell you what. I think it's Academy Award winner, to tell you the truth. All right, let's no, take no. another look at it. Uh, this was, this was, they run the bell here, guys. Straight, no. Wow. Yeah, that one run the bell. Ouch. So has, has, has he uh, taken a point away? No, correct? He said that's two. I didn't see him take the point away. He doesn't want to take a point away to fight this big, but... Well, you know what? Well, the rules are the, are the same yeah, you no got matter to. how big the fight is. And Arthur's a good referee. Uh, you're... So, I mean, if he thinks that... Arthur's questioning. He's asking. He's, he's asking. asking what is it low? Low blow. Nothing like the instant replay rule, I guess. And where is his blood coming from with Miguel Cotto? Uh-huh, there's blood on his chest. It's coming from his lip. It's coming from his lip. What's that, that, little... is, that is a result of, a, of, I think, his vicious uppercut from earlier, because he's coming from his lip. If, if Judah doesn't have inspiration now, he's hurt him. He's, he's made him bleed. Cotto's going at him. Now, this is where Judah needs to step it up. And Cotto says he's bringing it up. It's to his advantage. He's got him frustrated. Maybe this is part of the game plan that Judah's trying to mastermind all along to engage him to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with him where he knows he's going to get the best, the better part of the, of the action there. Take two dives and then get up and knock him out, huh? Who knows? It's strategy, but who knows? If it works, you know what? Other guys will do it. The bottom line with Judah is you never know. Cotto stepped up the pace after the low blow here. Maybe Trump knowing that Judah could be easily frustrated and unpredictable. But Cotto's got to be very careful because he's at a, a lot of speed. A lot of speed. And he has yet to figure out an answer for that left uppercut. 
And Judah controlled it well. He's still trying to bang the body. I think it's a matter of being patient with Judah, take him to the later rounds and see if he will unravel. Judah's got a lot of talent, folks, and we've known all along. He's got a lot of talent, but he's never been able to put together his talent with his strategy, his game plan, and execute it all and make it come together in one night. Well, his history tells you that the longer the fight goes on, he's the one who will unravel. There's that up there. There's another one. Another one. Another one. Another one. Another one. Another one. Wow. You know, Alan, he's, he's putting on a display with his skills. Right, so he reminds me of speed, reminds me of Mayweather. Now, Judah's got a bit worried about ticky tack stuff. I mean, the low blows was obvious that last one, but he's got to clear his head and worry about fighting. And Absolutely not. right. This is, the, this is a hurt business. Things happen. you got to be able to work through it. You can't be looking at a referee for help. Come on, man. Come on, come on, come on. We don't want another Vegas. Right. That happened in the, the Mayweather you, fight. You busting them up. You busting them you up. Busting them up. You got to bust them up, baby. Look, stay tight. Look, the only time you hear, don't pull straight back. Yeah. Drop. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Stay right there. Boom. Step around. All right. Let's take another look at some of the wildness in round three. And there was boom, a collection of uppercuts from Judah. There was the first boom, one. There's another, another one. It's a very unorthodox punch, especially coming from the southpaw. And Cotto does not seem to know what to do about it right now. Well, they better figure it out. We're in round four. I believe we did have a point taken away, guys. So it, it, they could turn the fight right there in the first three rounds, obviously. It's a huge point. Oh, we got blood over the right eye of Judah. Yep, now Judah's cut. Judah's cut. What, is that a punch? Or was it a headbutt? I couldn't tell. Uh, I think we'll wait for the replay on that one. I think it was a punch. That might inspire well, their the heads head. haven't been that close, but who knows? Watch those heads. Now they're getting close again. It's just so furious in there with all the speed. Talk about a rocky beginning. Oh, and Cotto going southpaw on us. Yeah. I'm not sure I like that. Yeah, I, I think that plays into Jab. Jab not taking advantage of it. Yeah, it's maybe just trying to confuse Jeff. Why would you give away your best weapon, which is your left hook? Just to screw around. I've seen uh, Morales do it before, just to prove a point. Which is not a time to be proving points. No. A lot of nights in Square Garden on Saturday night. Another guy named Sugar Ray Leonard trying to prove a point against Adela Duran. Cardo lands a pretty good right hand there. Judas seems to slow it down, but he's looking at he's looking he's that right up. Yeah. yeah, he's looking at that uppercut, guys. You know, but he, he, you could be waiting all night for that. You got to set it up. You yeah. got to jab to the body, jab to the heads, plant your feet, and that combination's going. Let it come to you. Cardo, meanwhile, is stealing these rounds, winning these rounds, staying busy, doing what he needs to do. You're right. You have to make something happen. You got to make just something happen. Come to you. You're right. It's frustrating to see when you got a guy the ability of Judah and not forcing more of the action. Cotto settled down a little bit with this round, guys, and now he's got the cut on the top of the head from Judah. It, it, it came with a flash, so we'll have to look at it. That's exactly what happened. And that is just an, that's a bullseye for for Cotto's left up, hook. I got a feeling if he does get Judah to. Lower that guard, he's going to be able to come in there with that left hook. He likes to go to the body. That's a good combination for Dakota right there. To me, Jab's mistake is that he's not using his jab enough here, and he's allowing Cotto to get set and get started. Nice right. jab. Right. Nice right. Right. He's right. not doing anything of anything enough. He's You're not right. jabbing enough, he's just not punching enough. <laughs> good point. That's Cotto. Watch out for the elbows. I mean, right there, you see, he should be jabbing to keep Cotto jabbing to keep that down the left hand. Allowing Cotto to take that step in. The cat has got his hands full of the heads inside. Another blistering round here. Cotto doing a lot of damage here in this round. His best round so far with the blood dripping out of his mouth. Blood coming down the right eye of Judah. A punch right at the end. The cat steps in and pulls him apart. The crowd goes wild because there's a large Detroit Cotto crowd in here to say the least. Oh boy, I have the feeling something unusual is going to happen in this fight. 
Richard Duda is the usual. Take a deep breath. No water. We're asking for no water. No water, please, guys. No water. That's ah, just a bloody lip, guys. Just a bloody lip. It's nothing. Don't worry about it, Miguel. It's nothing. It's just a bloody lip. I told you. I told you. I told you. Don't headbutt you. Keep your hands up. You got him bust over, Jay. You got him bust over. Go. Hit him in the back. Boom. Boom. Come on. Let me jump down. All right, round four action. Maybe we'll be able to see where the cut happened here. The heads did come together right there. It did. Accidental. But I think that may have been where it happened. Hmm. Now, you know, the cut lip was not inconsequential because the swallowing of blood over That's a long slowly. period of time tires them out and makes them sick. And Curtis did a great job going to the body. Round five. In front of an excited Madison Square Garden crowd. It's our pleasure to bring you this card tonight, everyone. I'm Alan Massey, got with Wally Matthews and Mario Lopez. And this is a good example, gentlemen, of Cole's in with a guy who's faster than him, who I believe is stronger than him. But he is asserting himself, he is applying effective pressure, he's sticking to his game plan, and he's doing what he needs to do to win this fight. Yes, because he's keeping Zab Judah busy playing defense. Meantime, Zab is spending a lot of time looking over at his own corner for instructions. You would think at this point he would know exactly what he needs to do. Lead right for Miguel Cotto. Arthur McCann, he breaks him apart. Now, that's what I like to see a referee do. Don't let him clinch up in there. Get him apart as soon as possible. Good left hand for Cotto. Judo's been taking a lot of punches the last two rounds, flicking the jab a little bit. And he's been so effective with the left uppercut, but he's going to have to do more to be able to set to set it up. He needs to start flicking that jab with authority to the body, to the, head, head. to the bloody lip, yep. and come back with a straight left or, or an uppercut. Uh, he just caught a few on the inside, too. Judo has a tendency to get frustrated, to say the least. A lot of blood on the trunk of Cotto. I think you're starting to see the frustration already. And you know, it's only the fifth round of a 12-rounder. Good left hand for Cotto out there. I already have the feeling that Judo's kind of let his moment pass. No, you're exactly right, Wally. And, and you know, I got to tell you, it's frustrating as, as both a fan and, and commentating on this fight because of what could have been, and he seems to just be hurting himself by not asserting himself. Oh, good jab for Cotto. Well, you had it right in that first round. It's the story of his career in three minutes. And that Judas looking at the referee, protect yourself at all times, is rule number one. Yeah, here we go again. Looking to the ref for help. I mean, that's yeah. all signs of first. Oh, those combinations are really doing a damage on him, not only physically, but I think mentally. You know what? If you feel like you have an issue, but you got to look to the referee, you have a way to even it out. Hit the guy. Yeah. He seems to start looking to anybody for help, and as I said, he was looking over to his dad in the beginning of the round. Yeah. Looking to the referee. It's a coward's way out. Straight to, to just put it bluntly. And you start looking for excuses. It, it's, just a, it's a sign of, of, um, of indecision, and, and you know. That's that left hook for the first fight. time, the uppercut, trying to get in there. And, and it could be pointed out, but look at that left hand. But Cotto is, is, is doing what he wants to do in this fight. Cotto's not looking at anybody else for help right now. No. With another beautiful uppercut by Judah. And you wonder, but another one, why he doesn't do it more often. Because he lands it on the button every single time. Well, I'm a strong proponent of the belief that fighters do things for a reason yeah. and don't do things for a reason. Listen, baby, you're doing great. You know he ain't doing it because he's getting hurt. You gotta throw him over. He's up on the round. He's up. He's up on the round. He did slay squarely on that big bloody lip, though. He's winning the round. Six coming up. Six. But yo, he's winning the round, man. Yeah, it's a nice round, though. That's it. The lips already stopped bleeding, Miguel. You don't have to worry about it. Watch his head. Watch his head. Where's the water? Give me the water. I right, have some Kodo action from round five. There's a good right Beautiful hand. Right. And that was when he was turned southpaw. It was pretty good. This one actually comes in behind the ear a little bit with the left hook. Best punch of the round, though, came from Zab, right? Yeah, the yeah, with that uppercut. Not enough, though. Too little, too late. Now, it's interesting that Zab was asking in the corner what round. Uh, it's the round six. Um, 
You're little halfway early, there. Little early to be <laughs> counting that. <laughs> Just an observation. Judas Sitter, when he sits back and waits to counter, he reminds me a lot of Mayweather. Except he's turned around the other way. Oh, there's a lot of similarities between the two of them. I think Zab actually might be a little bit more aggressive than Floyd. Oh, boy. You know what? I kind of fault the referee for that. Yeah. You know, you want to give a warning. you got to be decisive. You've got to get in there. Let's keep it clean. Koto guy. Nice sportsmanship from Koto. Koto bleeding? Koto is bleeding. On top of the head. He's bleeding from the eye, from the eye and the lip now. From my head, but well, I must say, speaking personally and for my dry cleaner, I'm glad we're a low back. <laughs> this is a bloody mess tonight. Oh, man. Toto's gloves very wet. And that might hurt his vision a little bit. He keeps pawing away. These are one of those you just sit here and hold your breath fights, guys, because you don't know what's going to happen. You know, you know. This whole night here is a mess. You know, you hate to harp on it, but with Judah in there, you, there's a good chance something nuts is going to happen. Uh, the track record speaks for yes. itself. Historically, it's not like you're case. making that up. No. <laughs> Round six, halfway gone. Miguel Cotto's been doing the same pressures. It's a matter for him of attrition if he could just beat down Judah and beat his real will down. But Judah still got so much fire in that left hand. There's a right hand that got in for Cotto. That's going to go in. But be patient. Cotto will be patient. And go, Cotto going immediately to the body. After catching him with that lead right oh, hand. Left hand. Good combination. He's a great finisher, though, Cotto. I'll tell you what. He knows how to finish. Judas in some trouble now. Kudo yelling him, urging him on, saying, let's go, let's go. <laughs> and the irony is he's the one that needs to start going. <laughs> Now you notice the uppercut that's been so effective. He's not as accurate now. He's been beaten down so much in this fight. It's not going to be as crisp and as clean for him when he's taking this much punishment. Cotto's face, a bloody mess. He doesn't care. I'll guarantee you he doesn't care. Yeah, he went. He turned around, guys, again. Just for a second there. He's back to conventional. And there he goes. And he's back to southpaw. Huh. I don't think I've ever seen him do this. Neither have I. I've seen it in Puerto Rico briefly once. Now, he, he is capable, he mentions at the time no. of doing it, but he just, I think he's doing a mental thing, guys, with Judah. I agree 100%, and I think that was a huge round for Cotto. I think Judah's showing real, like, terminal frustration now. You gotta work on that eye, work on that eye. Everything's okay, Miguel. Your lips fine. Yelling at the officials that came here to do our job, we're fine. All right, most of the action came from Cotto in that round. I mean, this was probably his best round of the fight, and there he almost sends Judah down with that short right hand. There it is, another angle. Best punch of the fight so far, from Cotto anyway. I hate to draw comparisons, but it reminds me of the old days of Chavez Sr. when he just chopped you down and chopped you down and oh, chopped yeah. you down and take your speed away and take your legs away. And he didn't care how long it took. That was methodical. But this is Miguel Cotto, who's got some bloody shorts. He, maybe he shouldn't have worn white tonight. <laughs> the advertising shows up better on white trunks anyway. So does the blood. Then the blood. Jab Judas on the left side of your screen and the red trunks. He's going to have to make some uh, adjustments here and try to regain some confidence. I just don't know how to read Zab Judah. Nobody else does Nobody in this does. building. I, it's, it's frustrating, I tell you. <laughs> and now he's working the jab effectively. He could set up that left hand with it. It's the one thing that slows down Cotto. Yeah, because he's jabbing with some authority now. Before, he's just kind of sticking it out there, you know, putting nothing behind it to keep Cotto off. But he put something behind those, and you notice Cotto couldn't do anything. A little bit of right hand stuck in for Cotto. Round seven. And if you notice, in the corners between rounds, uh, Judas' father, well, gets more and more animated, more and more frustrated with himself. He does a lot more punching than his son does. He's not exactly a calming influence. No. 
<laughs> As a father myself, I would think it would be very difficult to train your son and maintain Impossible. your Impossible. Impossible. I don't know Impossible. how they do it. That's your blood in there. And I just, I, I've never agreed with that combination, but, but to each his own. I thought it worked to Sugar Shane Mosley's detriment. Felix Trinidad's. Felix oh, Trinidad's. Yeah. It's never really worked to anybody's benefit. I know I couldn't do it. Here we are, round seven. A couple of good body punches from uh, from Judah. He's showing signs of life. It's just it's just amazing. Come back in round seven like he has and doing the kind of things he needs to do. That hurt. Well, it's helped that Cotto has kind of slowed down the pace a little bit this round. Oh, another nice, Man, beautiful right shot. A couple big shots. A couple big right shots. Right shots. And that's the Cotto. Yeah, Judah's not a strong and Cotto who's taking it. And that's the Judah we need to see at least a big. Tremendous punch. He ran into it the first one. We see it on the replay. It's not to be believed. And Judah's round is round seven so far, to say the least. And you wonder why Judah doesn't go right back to get on the inside, letting his hands go. It's Clearly, the family. He fights in spurts. And it, it is frustrating. I mean, you picked the perfect word. He also, I guess, the guy who's not going to give you spurts. You're going to have the same pressure constantly. You've got to, you got to pressure back. You've got a chance to win this fight. You got a chance to floor this it's guy. It's exactly that. It's one thing if you don't have the ability, but if you have the ability and not take advantage of it, it's so discouraging. Oh. Wow. Hit you to round. Is this possible? My scorecard after seven rounds is dead even. I guess it is possible. So, so, so is the point. Maybe this is the point. Yes. Yeah, you got a point. He can't take the shots. I told you that from the beginning. You can't take it. That's what I want to do. You want to tell me? Zach. Round eight coming up, Zach. Start putting together short combinations. Step around. Inside. One, two, three, four. Roll. Roll. He can't take it. All right, let's take a look at Miguel Cotto's jab. You see it snapped back the head of Judah, but you know what? This is all Judah's round. First one in a long time. Maybe we'll get to see that uppercut that Cotto just runs into. Wow. So for a guy with a bad chin, he stood up to a pretty good punch right there. You know, and Yoel Judah, Zab's father, the trainer, I, I think nailed it on the head. He can't take really his punch. He can't take the Judas maybe have landed, what, tens, if, if that solid shots, and, and, and they've been effective on no, Cotto. No doubt, no doubt. The more effective punches in terms of hurting the other guy have come from Zab Judah. Speed of power. I was just thinking tonight earlier watching a corner where Freddie Roach works and watching a corner tonight with <laughs> polar opposites. The Judah. <laughs> polar opposites. The difference in philosophy, I guess. West Coast versus East Coast. As Freddie tries to get his point across in subtle ways. And <laughs> Which I happen to agree with because there's so much chaos going on with the crowd and your adrenaline. Right. I think I would like a calming influence. Absolutely. It's Arthur. like being a parent almost. You don't want your kids to see you out of control. Right. Exactly. Exa it's a great example. Arthur McCann is going to need a dry cleaner. <laughs> We're in round eight. We're in New York. You know, Cotto might have taken a little bit off in round seven, and it cost him. You can't let this guy. But Judah's having a good round here, too. He's just that, that left. When he decides to commit to the jab, he's got a good, hard jab. I'll tell you what, when he decides to just let his hands go. Yes. But you know what? Ability comes in all different forms. And it's not just physical ability. Somehow mentally, he just cannot keep his focus in a fight the way Cotto can. Nice talking and, and again, I go again. back to Andrew Galata, who seems to, seems to have all the physical ability yeah. in the world, but doesn't seem to mentally <laughs> yes. have it together. Cotto went back to the right hand of the body and seems to be trying to turn this round around a bit. Uh, Judah did look over at the referee for some reason, which is very unusual. Not for him, but... <laughs> Good left hand from Cotto. That body lift is getting real ugly. Really bad. Now Judah sticks his tongue out at Cotto for whatever reason. Cotto, I think he's got one of those good shots. Yeah, he's got one of those busted lifts. He's oh, busted up no side. Left. 
for Cotto. Judas says bring it, which is never a good sign. Cotto being busy. Cotto being the aggressive. Judas started punching. Judas starting to act a little wiggy in there, guys. Starting to do some funny things, as you predicted, Wally. I don't know how it's helping him to take uncontested punches like that. And seemingly relishing more. In front of 20,658 fans tonight here. Wow. What a huge crowd and what a great night for boxing. Judah doing some strong oh, and a nice, beautiful uppercut by Judah. Ha. Maybe trying to sneak it in there. Snuck it in, he landed, but again, not throwing it enough. Cotto relentless in his pursuit and doing what he has to do to take these rounds. Cotto's got one of those busted up lips. On the inside and the outside, guys. Oh. Terrific recovery round for Cotto. Like the old days, Wally. 20,658 here at the Garden. You know, even in the old days, days, we didn't have too many Wally nights like this. Shit about you. you got your daughter down there, your family. Yo, Zab, wumble with this bitch. You got to keep hitting well, him. Well. There's uh, nothing. He can't, he, he's dead now. He's One, dead, two, dead. three, four. Stay there. Four. Dad, you got to go. Dad. Feel good, man. Come here. Feel good. Come here. Let's go. Let it go. Let's go. Let's go. the family now. Yeah, well, there he is. He starts throwing more punches than his son. All right, this was an all Cotto round, and here we can see where Zab is in the corner here. There's one, two, three. Cotto is southpaw as well. Right, throwing, that's Judah's favorite weapon, the, the straight left. Dominant round. Here we go. Round nine, Cotto comes straight down, starts backing Judah up. Judah's corner, I don't think doing him any favors in invoking the family in Philadelphia. It has nothing to do with what he's facing right now. And, and the right eye of Judah seems to be closing rather quickly. He's been linking it a lot. He's having trouble seeing that. Yeah, for, for a while, it was, it was kind of staying stable. Right? It's been cut for a few rounds. Left hand right. from Cotto. And there's another left hand from Judah. Good punch. Good counter. I'll say overall, though, Cotto's fought the exact type of fight he needed to fight tonight, although he's absorbed some wicked punches and got a point taken away. This is, this is the kind of pressure he had to put on this guy. Judah's really having trouble seeing out of that eye. That eye's taking a turn for the worst. And Cotto's taking full advantage of it, coming with some big left hooks. But Cotto's got to be patient, which is his trademark here. Cotto scored from the inside Oh, now he switches back. That eye looks bad for Judah. Downstairs goes Cotto. Blood streaming down from Zap Judah. Cotto has been bloody for a long time with a busted lip. We're in round nine. Oh, wow. Beautiful uppercut from Miguel Cotto. The left hook to the body. Is starting Judah going back to his combination to the head. Judah holding on now with that left arm. Oh, this could be Miguel Cotto's best round. Cotto really cried out. Now Judah still has got the speed, guys. He can counter if he wants to. I don't know about that, Alan. I think all the meters are going down. Cotto, hands are going down. The head and the body. Miguel Cotto, big miss for Judah from the right hand. Cotto going in. Down to one knee goes Judah. Out of nowhere. Just takes a knee out of nowhere. Wow. Couldn't take the relentless pressure. Couldn't take the overwhelming punch. They're going to stop the fight. The corner's going to stop the fight. The corner's going up the steps. And why do you expect to stop them? I have no idea. Cotto withering down. Cotto knows how to finish. And he will finish. Given the opportunity. Shoot the longest 30 seconds of Zab Judah's life right here. You know, you can't measure heart, can't measure courage and toughness. I think Miguel Cotto just arrived tonight, proving that he does have a chin that can take it. Now, what's Judah, though, guys? He's still got that. I mean, look at it. He sees that. I don't know what's coming to this guy. Are you kidding me? He took the knee a minute ago. He's. He's the, the most. Uh, he ain't to figure him out. He's baffling. He's baffling. That's a perfect <laughs> word. He's baffling. 
He takes a knee in the last 15 seconds. He's got power and speed. And it, well, you know what? It's the Mayweather fight all over again. The Mayweather fight all over again. That eye looks bad, guys. Yeah, the doctor, if you see that eye. Yeah. It's an old trick. They put the, they put the biggest, one, two, three, four. Uh, most large man of their camp to the right of Judah. Here we go. All right, here you're going to see some of, some of the Kodo barrage. I mean, it was pretty much a round long barrage until the very end. And then Zab just takes a knee to escape any further punishment. You know, I've always wondered why that isn't a disqualification. You basically said right there you don't want to fight anymore. Good point. I'll take it up with the New York commissioner. When you just said, I don't want to fight. That's basically what you're saying. Then don't hit me. I think you should be able to hit him with the other knee. I mean, come on. I you're, you're hardcore, Alan. There's an auto. Roy Jones. Yeah. Roy Jones did that once, guys. I know. Yes, he did. did. He got disqualified. That's right. Against Montel Griffin. Back to the business. Round 10. Let's see if Cotto can close it out. He's one of the best finishers in the business. Last two rounds have been super Miguel Cotto rounds. Now oh, that eye is wow. awful. Yeah. It is so slow and it's split in half. A jab to his right eye. He cannot see anymore out of his right eye. I noticed the technique in the Judah corner. There's a very large man in that corner who sat to his right. The, the, the doctor couldn't get around him so big to look at the eye. But it may be it's consequential at this point. But I, you know, that's a well-respected and revered trick. Block the doctor. Now look at Judah, show his speed. Combinations that we haven't seen all night. Now if we would have seen those combinations all night, I think it would have been a totally different fight. <laughs> but he just doesn't have the ability to do that all night. Yeah. You know, he just can't. Mentally, he can't do it. And in some ways, physically, he can't do it. You know, he takes rest. But you're right, he fights about 15 seconds of every round. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if Cotto took a little bit of rest here around Tim, but every time he does that, he seems to give Judah some kind of inspiration. So maybe you just keep flying until you can't, can't swing anymore. Now, Cotto's dropped his hands a little bit throughout this fight. I think he's felt like a tough fight for him, too. I mean, you know. Well, he's taken all, you know, that, that Judah could throw at him, just not enough coming from Judah. Sure, I mean, even though he's done most of the damage here, he has taken his share, and, you know, it's just not been an easy fight for him. Oh, not an easy he's fight. He's left-handed right now, guys. Fighting left-handed. It switches his back. Oh, an uppercut. Oh, he's trying, man. Sneak punch. I was surprised he's trying. I mean, a man who took a knee last round and now he's a different fighter. Still hoping to sucker him into that punch one more time. He's caught him with a straight left hand as well. Mm -hmm. he, he, and he's abandoned that. Keep it clean, Jeff. I wouldn't expect Cotto to be at the press conference while he's getting that lip stitch tonight. You never know. He's got a parade tomorrow. That's right. It's Grand Marshal. I think I'd skip that. <laughs> I bet you he doesn't. You won't make it back to the island. <laughs> Final 10 seconds, round 10. Oh, nice uppercut from Cotto. Judah pounding his chest, and I don't know why. We get a second, guys. Let me know how you got it. After we take a look at the corners, got the championship rounds coming up. Stop, 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 stop. You better, Zab, when you let your hands, only way you gotta do is this. You gotta punch, man. I know your eyes messed up. Yo, Zab, you gotta punch them. The eyes are shit. Yo, you, Zab, you hurt them. This guy can't hurt them. You punch, you hurt them. You hurt them. I'm telling you what you're doing. You stop punching. Do all the fighting. One, two, drop. One, two, three. You got it in you. You gotta pull it out. Don't let him walk in, but shoot, up, baby. shoot, Go. shoot, Suck go, up. shoot. Stay. That eye is bad. I'm stressed out listening to his dad. I know. Close your eye, close your eye, Miguel. We'll work on that eye. Careful, careful with the eye. I can't see. Move, let me work on it. I think Zab is sitting there thinking, is this man really my father? Well, he goes from one fight in the ring to a fight in the corner with his father. That's what I'm saying. He's fighting everybody. 
<laughs> Cotto goes up, puts him in the corner. But his father was right, actually. He's absolutely when he, right. When he punches, he does hurt Miguel. Yes. Oh, oh, goes oh, the left hand, and the combination to the head. I thought it was a punch. I thought it was a punch. Great combination for Cotto. To see what Gino has left here, round 11. Now he's going to try to hold on. He's trying to hold on. Arthur mccann has got his work cut out for him here. See the good news. That's it. Stop the play. Yoel Judah was right six rounds ago, but I don't think yeah. the kid hasn't shown the ability for a couple of rounds to do that. You gotta give credit to Miguel Cotto. He's a tough individual. He's relentless. He does what he needs to do to win. He proved a lot tonight. He really did. He did. You know, there's still gonna be questions about the chin, but to me, if you take those shots and you get hurt and you come back, that means you have a good chin. You don't have a bad chin. Can you guys think of anybody at 147 who's faster and can throw as much power as Judah and Spurts that he took tonight? No. No, not that speed, his speed is a well, assuming, assuming Mayweather can make 147, are we assuming that? Or we I just don't just think Mayweather, Mayweather has the, the, the wherewithal to go in there and mix it up. No. I mean, he, he can win fights by not getting hurt. He can win fights by not getting hurt. But it, I think a very interesting fight is with Antonio Margarito, who clearly is not half as fast as Judah, but possesses as much power him. if not more. I want to see him against Williams. You know, I want to see him. Look at this. Him. Speaking of which. Because I think his stock went down a bit in the past year. They had a rough fight. The crowd got they wanted tonight. Let's take a look at it, Wally. All right, here's the end. And you know, you knew it was coming. You couldn't be sure when. And if anything, you want to know something, Alan. It's more of an accumulation than anything. There's no one sensational punch here. Uh, the right hand, hand was pretty strong. The left. Yeah, but he, he had landed punches as good as that earlier in the fight. And at this point, Zab Judah's just got nothing left. And here's the end of it. And he's just at this point scrambling to get out of the way. I think it was a good stoppage, Wally. Yeah, I think his corner. What made. did you have it in your corner? I, I had yeah. um, at the end. I had Cotto ahead by four going into the last round. But I mean, I could have. If Yoel Judah had said to his son, "You're staying on the school now. You're not going back out there. We tried. That's it for tonight." I wouldn't have argued. I don't think anybody in here would have. I think this fight card tonight delivered what the best in boxing. We, we need more of it. I think terrific. From Here's the announcement from Michael Buffer. The official time. This contest comes to an end at 49 seconds of round number 11. The winner by TKO victory, still undefeated, still the WBA Wilverweight Champion of the World, Carlos Puerto Rico. Miguel Angel Cotto. Wow. The best in boxing, eh? <laughs> First night up on Satanta Sports, we have seen surely one of the fights of the year. What a performance from Miguel Cotto. Perhaps the display we've been waiting for. What a time to deliver it. And what a performance in defeat from Zab Judah tonight. Surely far from finished. The best of Judah. It wasn't quite good enough, but we remember him for his efforts tonight too. We hope very much you've enjoyed it as much as we have here. Steve Bunce, your thoughts? Well, first of all, I agree with that guy with the flag. Did you see what was on that flag there, Paul? Cotto v floyd let's go back to the fight we've just seen i didn't think it could be that good i didn't think judah could find the heart and the resistance to get to the 11th i thought that would be over in six or seven rounds that was sensational to duke me. well i 
figured Cotto would win, would win the fight. How's that fight's taken my breath away, Paul. It had everything, all every facet, every kind of drama, the cut, the knockdown. The jumps on the, the floor. The jumps on the floor, the low <laughs> blows. The, it had everything. And you, 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 you're right, you're not going to get a better fight than that probably all year. Did the first round in one round sum up the whole career of Zab Judah? <laughs> Well, you know, Judah for me showed so much more than class. He showed that, he, oh. that he's got a lot of heart. He had, he had a game plan tonight. He had a game plan. Unfortunately, he couldn't stick to it because, you know, Cotto just ground him down. But he had a game plan, and that was to try and hit Cotto with the left uppercut and try and, yeah, obviously just take him And he is hittable out. with it. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> he, you know, Cotto was out on his feet several times in the fight. But unfortunately for Judah, the difference between these two tonight, one wanted it more and one could apply himself more and that was Cotto. He applied his game plan, stuck to it and just didn't allow Judah a chance to recover. And what we saw there was madness, but he, he had Cotto hurt mm -hmm. for 40 seconds. Mm -hmm. Not just one punch, several it punches. It was lowish though. Steve. It was it was belt, but he goes down like he's been hit by a sniper. There's no need <laughs> for that. That's the first round. 19,000, sorry, 20,658 <laughs> fans are screaming. They're loving it. Suddenly you're on the floor. He didn't have to go down then, and we all know he didn't have maybe, to go maybe, down then. Maybe he was looking for the disqualification. You just don't know what goes through a fight as mind at that point in the fight. Did Miguel Cotto <laughs> believe that Judah could really hurt him? I don't, I, don't think, I don't think he did. I mean, if you look at the way he started the fight, he just, I mean, it wasn't uncharacteristic of Cotto. He took the fight to the challenger and he just, he, he just, he just steamrolled him. He's got such desire and commitment. I mean, let's just hope Hatton wins his fight in impressive, in impressive style. And that fight has to be a natural. Mm -hmm. They've got to make it. Yeah, yo Judah uh, in the corner, he, he summed it up because he kept saying, and he was right, every time his son went back to the corner, and it seems like an odd thing to say every time his son went back to the corner, he said, you're hurting him. And you know what? Mm -hmm. Judah was, was hurting him. Yeah. Every, almost every time he landed a popper shot, not, not just a touch jab, every time he set his feet yeah. for a left Here's or for a short right, what about this one? Is this, this one when he rolls inside? Yeah, this is, this, this is my favourite shot. Oh, look at that shot. The he's, turn, he's like a contortionist mm -hmm. there, Paul. If you slowed that down, his, his left shoulder comes across in front of his right shoulder. That's a sensational shot. It is. But Cotto, you know, we talk about, you know, maybe struggling down at the lower weight. That would be the case. But I'm not saying his chin's bad, but he shows he's hurt. And, and that, that's got to be a good sign for any of the welterweights out there or the light welterweights, Ricky, coming up. He shows he's hurt and he can be hurt. Duke, you said this fight had everything. It certainly did. We thought we heard Mercanti Jr., the referee, saying after the third round that he had taken a point. Well, I, he had I, to take a yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, he? He, he did. He did have to take. For this one, yeah. Yeah, that that was a definite low blow, unintentional, but a definite low blow. But this fight, for me, it did. It had just about everything you could want in a fight. It was so exciting. Unfortunately for, for, for Judo, he's going to be remembered as the loser and obviously not, not the victor. But Cotto, I think, goes from strength to strength. When you think of the fights that are out there for him, possibly Ricky Hatton, possibly Paul Smith, possibly Margarito, Mayweather. I mean, there are some super fights to be made. I think the Mayweather's the fight that's going to be out there for him. They're going to both want that. HBO can put that together. And perhaps we can get Mayweather out of retirement. Mayweather's spoken and he's spoken exclusively and he said, I will only come out of retirement for Oscar De La Hoya. After that fight, as soon as he starts speaking in English, that could be the fight for the future. Did uh, Judah, the way Judah was able to find Cotto, does that give a clue to Mayweather's victory? Absolutely, and May Mayweather especially. Mm. However, you know, you've got to think on what happens if Mayweather doesn't take Cotto out after nine rounds. Even if Cotto's got a disgusting cut on the bottom of his lip, which is from his, from his top tooth going through it, even if he's cut, even if he's been rocked and shaken, and I don't think Mayweather rock and shaken like that, still he's still there. there. And that's what makes the, the Mayweather-Cotto fight so intriguing. I tell you what it would also make, if Ricky does the job on Castillo that we all want him to do, and I don't just mean on points, I mean fantastic, then Ricky's got to be right there. Who's above Ricky in that list? I, apart from Mayweather, for Cotto, I can't see anybody. Did you feel middle of the rounds, by and large, Cotto was getting on top? Yeah. Did he look the stronger his man? His physical strength in this fight was another, another key factor. I mean, he looks like a, like a light middleweight. I'd Never love to have known what he weighed what on he the weighed night. On the, sure. But, you know, fighters often talk about, you know, career-defining fights, but this fight tonight showed what Cotto's all about yes. against a world-classed opponent that we just, he just, in the end, he just dismantled him with just sheer aggression, work rate, stamina, an heart an and Another desire. thing, 
about Cotto, because whether or not it's by design, the way Judah goes about the business can be very distracting, surely, if you're the opponent. In this case, Cotto. Absolutely. He wasn't. He Outside was never player. faced. Even when he was caught in the next round, he would still take his time. coming forward. And then in the 10th round, he went and took a breather, which was fantastic because he had a very good round in the ninth. But he had a bad round in the eighth. He never, ever lost his call. And in fact, you could possibly argue he should have pushed on once or twice. Mm -hmm. But he didn't because he knew what would happen. He was loving it as much as we were, Steve. Oh, well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> we think we were loving it. There was 20-odd thousand people. There. I'll give you the stat again in a minute. They were truly loving it. Here's the sixth round. See, this is more just, good this work is, from Cotto yeah, here. This is more just typical Cotto. And he's got Judo hurt here. But Judo does quite a good job on the ropes. You know, he switches a little bit. Right, he carries the, 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 the right hand really low, but it's just all Cotto. And Cotto carries his head really low. And he was cut out over the, over the left eye at him. Really bad gash in the lip, but he just kept persisting. He kept pushing on. Good two-fisted attack. Uh, he did, did, a, did a good job, um, uh, Judah, in the sense that he does carry that right hand low for the southpaw lead. And, of course, that's a natural block against Cotto's best shot, the left hook to, to, to the side of the kidneys and also to, you know, to just under the rib cage. So he, he nullified that shot by just his natural style. Steve, it was one of those fights, though, was it not, where every time you felt, like, OK, now we can see Cotto's going to get well on top here. Suddenly... Little changes, subtle. And, and just, just the subtle changes. What he does there, that's a great, this is what in round seven. This is, this is the, big, big, the last big Judah round. And this has shocked us all here in the studio because we thought by seven rounds, Cotto's going to be taking control. Yes. And he gets seriously, seriously wobbled there because uh, uh, Judah opens up. But by this stage, Paul, the right eye's starting to close. And let's get it right, the desire is starting to go. Even as you're winning a round, the desire's starting to ebb away. So I, I thought Cotto would have got to... Judah a lot quicker in the fight, you know, maybe by the third, fourth round, and I just thought that Judah would just be on his bike for the remainder of the fight. It didn't work out like that. I mean, a, a lot of credit to the loser tonight. I really think he played his part in a fantastic fight. But in the latter rounds, was Cotto just far superior, shutting him out? Far superior, Paul. You know, too, too much desire, too strong. Uh, really imposed himself and just wouldn't be denied. He, he just wouldn't let Judah back into the fight because he knew Judah, you know, could can bang and he knew Judah had had him hurt. But three unanswered straight straight uh, lefts there from Cotto because he switched to the southpaw stance. That confused Judah a little bit because he never really thought. But, you know, Cotto's pace and power, he was the same from the first round to the last round. Yes. He didn't, he just, there was no relent, none whatsoever. And in fact, if anything, I think he actually gets marginally faster, Duke, if you want to know my opinion. I think he just slowly, he hits his pace about round three, and that's the pace he maintains right to the very end. He never wastes a shot. He doesn't show you much of his chin, and that's why Judah did find that fantastic uppercut in the first round, and he found it throughout the fight. And that's a, a big weakness. Now, Floyd would have been taking notes at his Las Vegas apartment. Sure. How did you read this in the ninth? It's all about body language, isn't it, in this round? Because you can see Judah quite deliberately holding on to Cotto's right hand when he had him in that clinch. Cotto's just looking to... He just keeps, he's gone headhunting, obviously, in this round because he just wants to keep winding him up and keep turning the shots over the top. OK, he goes back to the body every now and again, but he knows he's got Judah on the run and he, he just keeps him there. Phenomenal. Yeah. The eye's hurting right, him at this it? stage, Paul, because he's, he's rubbing the eye quite a lot. He was rubbing the eye from early on. Yeah. The eye is hurting him at this stage. And when he goes down there, he gets caught with a half a shot. At the end of the day, I thought that was the end. I thought he could have, he, he could have been withdrawn then. In fact, the corner then starts... So not the corner, the commentators, Wally Matthews and co, start talking then about you, maybe perhaps Joel Judah could pull out his son at that stage. And, and who, would, who could have complained? Indeed. Certainly no one watching tonight, yeah. and certainly none of us sitting here today. Yeah. It's certainly a far bigger beating than in his previous defeats, isn't it? Oh, absolutely, it's a far bigger... Different order of... Costa Zou, he has Costa Zou yeah. gone, yeah. remember? He's celebrating, he does a little jig, and then he gets called. Let's not forget that. And against uh, Mayweather, he, make, he touches Mayweather, hits Mayweather, Mayweather touches down. And uh, in terms of valour, did he surprise you tonight, Judah? He did, he did indeed, but yeah. I, I think we give him short swift because he's a fairly unpleasant guy, because he's been involved in all these terrible incidents, that doesn't reflect on his heart, but somehow we tend to lump those two things together. Unpleasant character, I bet he lacks heart. The latter moments of this fight, will they stay with him now? 
Sadly, I think they will. People in, talk in about boxing terms. You know, pe people talk about you know a loss is no great shame. A loss is no great shame. You get caught on the chin or you lose on points. But you go through a war of attrition like that in whatever it is your 40th fight. Yes. Yeah. That you have to carry that fight with you for however many years, months, or fights you've got. Here's left. the conclusion of it, Duke. Well, it's just it's just all cotto, you know, two fisted, oh. and you know, you know Judah's not really going to beat the count. You just you just. You know, he's, he's got up and he's sick, he's been hurt, he's down, had the wind knocked completely out of him, and he knows he's getting up tomorrow. So, you know, true to form, you know, all, all Cotto does is just, he just turns on the gas and just keeps plowing in and plowing in, and he's such a physical fighter. He's, he's probably, the, physically, probably the strongest welterweight out there. Physically. And, that, and there was a point here when Judah most definitely turns away just there. And that's what young Arthur McKenna, I say young Arthur, he's about 50 years of age himself. But that's what young Arthur was looking for. He was looking for that moment, Paul, Brilliant. when Judah took his eyes off of Cotto. Because that's the moment when you quit on your feet and he intervenes in the absolute second. Perfect stoppage. That's why there's no outcry from Judah's corner. The, the world weight division's always been a great division over the years, and I think this kid really has a chance to just carry on that same vein. He really does. I mean, you think he can go in against Margarito, possibly Mayweather, yep. maybe Ricky Hatton. I mean, there's some fant Paul Smith. There's some fantastic fights out there. It's got to be even more special this time round in uh, Puerto Rican National Day, of course. The <laughs> third year in a row that Cotto has headlined at Madison Square Garden. He won the other two, but he didn't win them quite like he did tonight. Let's hear from him now. I'm here with the champion of the world, Miguel Cotto. Miguel, congratulations. Was this a much tougher fight than you expected tonight? Well, I don't expect, I just expect a, a tough fight with Seth because he, he's a, a tough fighter. But I'm here, I win, I'm prepared for that. I'm, excuse me, I'm happy with that. Did you feel that he was acting a bit when you hit him low? Did you feel he was trying to take advantage and get points taken away and maybe get a possible disqualification? Well, I, I, I hit him in, in the low blows. With the low blows, accidental. I, I don't, I don't do it. I didn't do it on purpose. But uh, that, that's the impasse in, in boxing. You have to stay prepared for that. Uh, I apologize. We said I apologize with that, with all the fans here and in the house. Sorry. Did he hurt you early? He caught you with a couple uppercuts. Did it hurt you and did it make you change your game plan a little? Yeah, he hit me. He hit me with with a, with a lot of uh, tough punch, a heavy punch, but. I prepare. I'm pretty. I'm pretty ready for this fight. I, I prepare enough for this fight, and I'm going to fight. Did his speed surprise you, or his strength? Did they surprise you at all in this fight? But uh, his his shape. You know, he he's ready for this fight. No, not the same as the last two, three fights. But he he coming ready for this fight. You looked great tonight. You were relentless, and you stayed on your game plan, and you went to the body. Did you feel that he was going to be able to go the distance, or did you think you were going to have enough in you to knock him out? No, after the eighth, eight, nine round, I'm coming just for pass the round. But I hit him pretty hard in the in the round 11, and I go with him, and I go to him. I go for him. What What did uh, Zab Judah say to you after the fight? No, I, the, that was a great fight. I'm a, a, she told me I'm a, I'm a great fighter. And I agree with that. Well, you know, I prepare for that. I'm, I'm a world champion. I'm in here. That's great. Now, Miguel, who would you like to face next if given the opportunity? Antonio Margarito's out there as a possibility. Of course, Shane Mosley. So it's a very talented, deep weight class. Is there anyone in particular that you would like to face? No, I'm ready for everyone. I just wait for, for Todd Buff, Bob Adam. He put me, the guy who, who's, they put me in front of me, I'm going to face him. And who will that be, Steve? Well, I'll tell, I'll tell you when we will find out. June 23rd, because he'll be ringside. Bob Aaron will be there with Castillo. He'll be there. He may even walk to the ring with Castillo just to wind Ricky up a little <laughs> bit. I don't really care who it is, because I'll tell you what he's done there tonight, live on American TV and obviously live here. Uh, he has w just stepped inside the living rooms of armchair boxing fans with his honesty. Sure, I hit him low. Sure, he hurt me. And he congratulated me at the end, and I congratulate him. That's what sports fans want to hear. Mm. That was a fantastic post-fight interview. Are we going to end this show, Duke, by you telling us there, I was right all along. <laughs> nah, not, he not, wouldn't do that, would nah, he? Not, <laughs> were not, you wrong all along? Not, not, not at all. I couldn't have imagined that fight was going to be as, in, as enthralling as it was. But, you know, I think Cotto, for me, has certainly walked into the, the big league in terms of financial gain now. He deserves to be up there with the Mayweathers and co. He really does. Duke, On performances like that, how can you not? Duke and Steve, really enjoyed your company tonight. Thank you both very much indeed. Another chance to see it, Satanta Sports 2. Sunday, 8 a.m.
We might just stay here, wait for it to come round again, watch it all for a second time. And please don't forget, the two best in the world at Light Welter are nearly all set now. Earlier tonight, we heard from Ricky Hatton and he could not be happier about preparations for his meeting with Jose Luis Castillo. It's live and exclusive from Las Vegas, Saturday, June the 23rd. It all gets underway that night at 11 p.m. Live and exclusive on Satanta Sports 1. That will be special. This was also from us all. Bye for now.